Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a stuffed animal sized flannel shirt or jacket depending on how you style it that works for both guys and girls. This will fit Build-A-Bears or any similarly sized stuffed animal. Now let's get started! The materials you'll need are some pins, scissors, some plaid fabric, and this technically isn't a flannel because I'm not using flannel fabric. You can't really tell by looking at it, but if you have flannel on hand, you can definitely use that. You'll also need a few buttons. I just went with black ones, and they're not all the same size, but they're pretty close, so that's okay. And you'll also need your patterns. Here are the measurements I used in case you wanna draw out your patterns by hand, but I will have printable versions linked in the description box below. So I'm gonna start by laying out my fabric and cutting out my pieces. So I'm gonna start with piece number one, and I'm gonna need two of these pieces, and I want them to be mirror images of each other, so I'm folding the fabric bad side to bad side, and then I'm just going to lay the pattern on top, pin it down, and then cut it out. After I have pieces one and two cut out, I'm going to get my number three pattern, and then I just need one layer of that, so I'm gonna lay it on one layer of fabric, and then cut it out. And I'm gonna do the same thing for piece number four since I only need one layer of that. And then skipping around a little, I'm gonna move on to piece six and seven. And I need two of these, so I'm just gonna fold the fabric in half first and then cut it out. And then lastly, we have this long piece for a collar and I'm gonna cut one layer of that out. Next, I'm gonna start with pieces one, two, and three. And as you can see, they're kind of curved at the bottom. I just noticed a lot of flannels have that shape, so I tried to replicate that. And now we're just going to hem the bottoms of all of them by folding over the bottom edge once, and then pinning it in place, and then do a straight stitch right where I pinned. Now I'm just going to focus on pieces one and two, and I'm going to fold in this longer edge on the side, and I'm just going to fold that over once and then pin it in place, and I'm going to repeat that to the other side. And then I'm going to sew a straight stitch straight down. Next, I'm going to add my buttonholes. And if your sewing machine doesn't have a buttonhole stitch or you just want to leave them off, you can leave off the buttons and just have it be kind of an open jacket. But I'm going to add the buttons, so I'm just going to place them where I want them. And then I'm going to take this black pen and just kind of mark a straight line the length of the diameter of the button. And I know you can't really see this at all, but I can just barely see them, and so I use this as a guide for my buttonhole stitch. This was actually my first time making buttonholes, but I think they turned out pretty good. I don't know if there's a specific way you're supposed to cut the holes, but I just decided to fold mine in half and then just make a cut right inside the stitches. And that way we have the hole for our button. And since it was my first time making buttonholes, I actually made them too small, but it was barely just big enough for the buttons to fit through them, so I didn't have to redo them luckily. But now I'm just cutting through the rest of the buttonholes. After that, I'm going to set it aside and move on to pieces three and four. And so I first need to connect them, but a lot of shirts and flannels have these kind of folds in the back. And so that's what I'm doing here, making kind of two pleats around the center of the shirt. And it'll end up kind of looking like a rectangle. And once I have that, I'm going to flip piece number four, good side to good side, kind of sandwiching those folds in there. And then I'm just going to pin them right in the folds with the pins vertically. So I can just sew right over the tops of the pins, and now I'm gonna pin together the rest, and then do a straight stitch to connect them. After that's done, as you can see, there's these two nice little folds in the center, and now I'm gonna grab these front pieces, and I'm gonna flip them good side to good side with the back piece. Then I'm gonna pin together the tops of both pieces, and I'm putting my pin vertically so I can just sew right over the pins, and then I'm gonna do a straight stitch right across both tops. I know it kind of seems like I'm jumping around a lot, but I'm going to set that aside and now move on to the collar. And I'm going to fold the collar good side to good side. And I really just need to sew together these slanted sides, so I'm just going to pin them kind of by the ends. And then in my sewing machine, I'm going to do a straight stitch right along both slanted edges. After that, I'm going to turn it inside out, which is luckily very easy. And you might need a pencil to help turn out these pointy ends but I just used my finger at first and then went in with a pencil later. And now I can attach this to my main shirt piece. So how I sewed the collar on might look a little bit tricky, but I'm first gonna start with lining up the middle of the collar with the middle of the back of the shirt. And I'm gonna fold over one of these long straight edges of the collar. I just folded up a tiny bit, but I would recommend folding it over just a little bit more than what I did. And now I'm gonna lay that folded edge against the neckline of the shirt. And so that way on the outside, there's a clean edge. 
And now I'm going to fold the other side over, but then tuck in that edge a little bit so it's a clean edge on this side. And now I'm going to pin that in place. If this seems too complicated for you, you can leave off that extra fold on the inside of the neckline and just keep it on the outside because that's what you'll see most. But you can kind of see that inside edge when the shirt is unbuttoned, so that's why I wanted the clean edge on the inside as well. So now I did that to the rest of the collar and pinned it down. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch right where I pinned. And don't worry if the collar is a little bit short on one side. And after sewing that on, we have some nice clean edges. And now I'm just going to set those aside and grab my sleeve pieces. And now I'm just going to hem the bottom edge of both of them. I'm folding the bottoms over twice and then pinning them in place. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch right along the bottom to hem them. After that, we can sew them on to our main shirt piece. So I'm just going to lay them good side to good side. I do this a lot in this channel. And I'm just going to pin them together along the curves. And I'm first going to fold it in half just so I know where the midpoint is and so I can line it up perfectly. But there will probably be some extra, so if you don't start right in the middle, it's probably going to be fine. But now I'm just going to pin together the curves. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch right where I pinned. And after that, we are almost finished. I'm going to fold this whole thing in half, good side to good side. And then I'm going to line up the sides of the shirt and the bottoms of the sleeve and then pin them together on both sides. And I know this should be like the easiest thing to pin, but looking back at this footage, it's taking me forever. But after lining everything up perfectly, I'm going to sew right where I pinned in these kind of L shapes. After that, I have a little bit of extra fabric on the bottom of the sleeve, so I'm just going to trim that off. And then we can turn this inside out. And the collar will kind of be sticking up, so you'll want to fold that down. And you could use an iron if you want, but I just creased it really well with my fingers. And now before adding the buttons, I'm going to try this on my stuffed animal. And this guy is actually not a Build-A-Bear, he's just a normal teddy bear. But he has very similar measurements to Build-A-Bears, so this will probably fit a lot of basic teddy bears out there. And now I'm just going to find the placement of the buttons. And I probably should have just left this off of him and kind of just used a marker to mark where I wanted the buttons. But my initial idea was just to try this on him and then put a pin through the buttonhole. And that should go through the other side of the fabric so I know right where my button is. But this seems kind of dangerous to stuffed animals. So I would recommend just using a Sharpie or other marker to mark where you want the buttons. And you don't really have to try it on your stuffed animal at all to do this. So now that I have my pins right where I want the buttons to be, I'm just going to go in sewing on my buttons, and I'm doing kind of an X shape through the four holes of the button. I don't know if this pin method was just really inaccurate, but after sewing on all my buttons, some of them clearly did not match up with the buttonholes on the other side, so I had to go back and adjust that. But if they are a little off, they actually do still match up with the buttonholes pretty well, so if you make little mistakes, don't worry about it. And after that, you can try it on your stuffed animal, and you're done! Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!